farming can be fun? Is farming fun? What is the one thing that when it comes up, you go, ah, uh, in MMOs? Guess, and not yeah. only MMOs, but online games for literally decades now. Yeah. But what if that could change? Talk about farming. Okay. There's something that's constantly been impressing me with Squeenix's model. And this isn't just an FF14 gush, because the system I'm going to explain does have some flaws. But okay. it's such a step in the right direction. I know, direction. I see his hair, guys. It doesn't matter I see what it. game it is, whether it be your Call of Duties, your Apex Legends, yeah. your MMOs, your any online game has oh, this... Oh, this actually reminded me. Um, so, a very long time ago, uh, this is like maybe, I don't know, like three or four months ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. Uh, I, I, I saw on the website, they had a plushy uh, chocobo, right? Because th this thing reminded me, right? This is like the helmet that you're able to buy. You know, I thought it was really cute. I wanted to, you know, I got something to make myself feel better. And uh, yesterday, yesterday it, it, it got here. And so I, I got my little, I got my little plushy chocobo. Uh, after like four months, I, I totally forgot about him. But yeah, I, I, I ordered a little plushy. I don't know why, it just, it, I, I just wanted to have it. And so, yeah, I have them sitting right over here. Fear and base model when they design every single system. And that is, how do we keep the players online all the time? Because if yeah. they have this complete fear that if you're not playing their game, you're not spending money with them, yep, and you're playing yeah. something else, and you're spending money with those guys, right? That's it. So oh, it comes down to Halo. when we're talking about farming, you've seen every system under the book at this point. You've uh -huh. seen... Prestige levels, honor levels, reputation levels. And they're usually in some way gated or they're made really, really long to keep you grinding the same thing over and over. Oh, yeah. But there's two elements of it. One is the way you, uh, what the reward is and how you get it. So those will be the levels. And then there's two is the gameplay involved with actually doing it. And typically, this falls into the category of just playing the same thing over and over and over and over again, regardless of how fun that system might actually be. And yeah. it doesn't matter because as long as you're playing it, you're doing it all the time. You're playing their game. That's it. So you, even if you come down to like, I don't know, I've done this, something like the Burning Crusade Classic, which many people will be playing right now, and you're after that spell strike gear. Right. You might be farming fire elementals for hours and hours and hours. And I spent like 12, 14 hours grinding out moats of fire. And then I had to go and do the same with some other moats. In uh, I, I did the same thing, like, back in the day, like, not in BC, but, like, in original BC. Like, I farmed out all this stuff myself. Uh, I, I farmed them out at the Elemental Plateau. I was on a PvE server, so it was easier for me to do. Eventually build this one set of gear. And you will say, I felt really accomplished when I did it. But, yep. for me at least, and I think more and more people fall into this category every single day, is that you need to turn your brain off from it. Because what you're actually physically doing is really boring. You're just grinding, you're waiting for mobs to spawn, you're killing them, they're not too yep. difficult. Then you're waiting for the next one, killing it, not too difficult. And this yep. is where we turn to YouTube, we turn to Twitch, we turn to Netflix, we turn to whatever it might be to try and distract our brain from the fact that what we're doing is an incredibly monotonous process. And the same exists across tons of other games where you're just like, right, I need to... Recently, a good example would be my kids got into Plants vs. Zombies. And okay. I thought, that's cool, they can okay, do some shooting cool. with some peas and pods and things like yeah. that. But then they started to discover, like, the hidden characters. They started to learn about uh -oh. the goals that were in the game. And what did they turn uh -oh. into? Really endless grinds, where they had to wait for certain events to happen. And then they had to grind out, like, 50 PvP matches in order to earn an X amount of crystals. And those crystals can then open a chest, which yep. then leads you into something else, where you can then yep, get one chest reward. Then you need to wait for the event to come back, and it can take months. And it's all a case of keeping you online all the time. That's I think every game has this. I don't think I think there are games that do it more than others, but I feel like as a general rule, every single game does this. They have like these repeat content things. Now, the difference is that some games do it with more core content and some games do it with less core content. And I actually think that a lot of MMOs in general, that's not a bad thing. It can be enjoyable to just do this, especially if it's like a mindless task, like logging a new world. It's just, it's relaxing and easy to do. Their purpose, because if you're not playing their game, you're doing something else. Well, Squeenix obviously doesn't have that approach. We've talked about it many times yeah. now, and it's such a freeing experience because it allows their creative floodgates to open. Because when you don't start designing something with the goal of how do we keep players online all the time, mm -hmm. when you drop that out of it, 
when you have the freedom to say, we're kind of okay if players don't engage with this. It's the same thing we talked about with our Bosia content. And yeah. we just make it fun. People will play it if they enjoy it. And if they don't enjoy it, they're not going to play it. And that's okay. They'll play I something. think that's a big issue with things like Torghast, etc. I think recently Blizzard's done a better job at just trying to make Torghast just fun rather than making it mandatory. Because I think that's what a lot of game developers do is that in order to get people to interface with systems that are not necessarily super well designed and fun to play, they add in incentivization to them to just make you want to do them for, for all. How exactly? It's still the same. Uh, well, how exactly I mean that Torghast is like less mandatory is that basically... Like, and this is like true with like the Sanctum of Domination patch. You didn't have to do it as many times. And after you got the legendary, you didn't really have to do it at all. Like if you didn't want to do Torghast, you never had to do Torghast because you already had your legendaries. That's the difference. Else, but we'll have the confidence that they'll come back for yeah, what they do better. enjoy when we update that. And we update the game very regularly. And so that whatever they enjoy will likely come back later and they'll resubscribe then they'll come back for a month or two yeah. or they'll leave and then they'll come back again and we're happy with that model because that's worked out for us so far and as we can see it's a slow burn that has risen ever 14 to the levels it's at now now i encountered one of these systems it's not a new system i want to be totally clear on that i want to be i want to be so fundamentally clear this system is not new okay. and it's not perfect but jesus christ is a step in the right direction and i want to talk about treasure maps so I didn't know okay. these existed. I have now played Final Fantasy for about 800 hours. I have That's no idea this system existed. I have now completed the MSQ. I finished. Wait, Endwarf. how has he played it for 800 hours? He's been playing it for like a year, bro. I put a thousand hours in the Lost Ark, and it's been like a month. But it's been a month. Good, don't worry. Our videos are coming on dad, that. I've, I've been in true. Germany for three weeks, working 16-hour days. So <laughs> bear with me as we get back into the swing. Mm -hmm. What are the treasure maps? So I know for a lot of our FF14 viewers, you'll know what these are. But I also saw a lot of people in the chat. And this is what happens when you're not forced. And this content is not mandatory. Mm -hmm. Who, one, didn't know about it. Two, thought it was probably useless. Being human. And three, yeah. did know Maybe about it. Weird. But didn't understand that the rewards were actually really good. Mm -hmm. So what is it? It's to do with professions. So when I okay. say professions to you, certainly as MMO gamers and our WoW audience, what do you think of in terms of getting difficult and hard supplies? Right? When Set you need those animal. raw materials that yeah. are really tough. Well, the first thing you got to think of is, oh, I probably need to farm something like Anixia to get Anixia scales to make yeah, Anixia yeah. high cloaks. I need to farm elementals and elemental plateau. Spell I need to grind out gear. a reputation over a series of time because it's probably time gate. Or something along those savers. lines in order to access a vendor who can then sell things. Or perhaps there's a random vendor that suddenly appears if I wear a magical cloak in the case of Najatar. Mm -hmm. Or I need to do some sort of raid boss like Thok the Bloodthirsty in order to get something from that. So I can then get bring the trinket. it in. But some sort of trinket. long, long grind, right? And it'll be yes. the same for those of you who PvP and uh, FPS games. It's like, okay, well, I need to get prestige level 30. Then I will get some sort of gun upgrade. Or I need to frag somebody with like 50 grenades. And then I'll get some sort of grenade upgrade. Or something along those lines where you're just like, okay, I'm presented with this thing. And I can almost mathematically calculate when I'll get it. Right. And that's that's the grind. I can turn my brain off. I can go at it. I'm just going to go into this game. Sometimes even to the point of Seems simple enough. scuffing your own gameplay because you're going to use a weapon or a tool or a utility that you don't particularly enjoy, but you really want that unlock. So you're going to play your character as you don't want to play it in order to find out about these things. So and now I've finished the MSQ and I agree with Jesse Cox on this is that FF14 is really an RPG MMO because essentially I've played 800 hours of single player MMO. And now that's done... I'm starting to do what I always do, which is, okay, where's the MMO stuff? Where's See, the like, for me, I've actually felt the opposite. I felt like I did a lot of stuff. Like, what I usually do is I play with other people, and then I transition into just playing by myself. Uh, because, like, I, I played with so many people in Final Fantasy. I did that shit all the time. Like, I would do the Wondrous Tales every week. I would do all this other stuff every week. Yeah. Um, what's this here? You can play in many ways. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. It's like... I, I think that's a good thing. Uh, it definitely is. Stuff that they've put in the game that I don't even know about, that's not story related, that's the MMO stuff. And I'm now dipping into professions and I'm dipping into all these kind of things. And along that journey, I encountered treasure maps. So the system is pretty simple. When you're doing various activities, you can get a treasure map in a bottle. Now, I instantly had my heart sink thinking, this is probably something like Azurai Islands in Bath Battle yeah. for Azeroth. But then you remember games like Sea of Thieves, where the treasure maps are right. really fun. It's like, okay, you got to get that out of your head. 
That's the cool thing. It's like the idea of island expeditions was really badass, right? It's the implementation that was problematic. This to try because that's what I'm here to do is to find out about all these integral systems to the game. Yeah. And I found something so cool. And all you do is you have this treasure map. You can decipher okay. it and it'll give you exactly what you would expect, which is a little picture with an X marks the spot Got it. somewhere in the world. And it will tell you what zone it's in, which is great. So you click on easier. that zone map, you browse the map. So it's the same like, as okay, Lost Ark. It's there. And there are in set locations, although there's lots and lots of them. So after you've done a few, you instantly recognize where this place would be. And then you fly down there and you do dig. So very similar to WoW's archaeology system where you okay. go down and you dig. But unlike that system, there's no like you need to stand on the exact correct point. As long as you're in the right area, it will just reveal the treasure box. Then you get a treasure box. You Great. click it, some mobs spawn. You kill them, and then you get a reward from the treasure box, which will be cool. profession-related. Now, everything I'm about to tell you has nothing to do with professions. This is the first thing that I thought, genius. And I mean, genius. Does this system have to specifically relate to the reward that comes from it? And the answer is, no, it doesn't. What it has to be is fun. It has to be fun first, and then we can reward whatever, because it won't matter. The players were having fun. So, so okay. far, I've not described something super fun to you, but wait... Then there's, and I would guess it's about 60 to 70% chance that a portal will spawn. And there are ways of gaining treasure maps which guarantee portal spawns every single time. Okay. This is when it got interesting. Because now what I'm did I excited. Find? An entire, separated off from everything else, raid zone. What? And I'm not talking about some small corridor with is some enemies tossed in, the group? in there. I'm talking about fully fleshed out, theatrical circus-like environment. I'm going to be focused on the Endwalker iteration Holy of this shit. because that's the latest one. But there are variations of this I will talk about. Yeah. And I found this entire raid zone and we got a raid team together. So we, our eight-man team is now doing this content. Friends are now working together to do something for an afternoon. Instantly, so much better. Why? Because what you're doing there is so good. So good. Come on, Paul. Oh, we got killed. Him. So this is the raid? Wait, wait. Oh, is this going to portal? Where's the portal? Come on, baby. Come on. A portal, a portal has appeared. appeared. Oh, wait. What the fuck? We ride. It's like a Diablo portal. What is this? You presented with a room. And in that room, there's another treasure chest. You get bonus rewards. So not only have you already gotten your base reward from just clicking the chest outside the world, oh now you're in the portal, you get a bonus reward. This is badass. Clicking on this chest will then spawn maybe a boss. Maybe it'll spawn Holy a whole bunch of enemies. Shit, this nothing is really super cool. difficult. Nothing that you can't clear in, say, 20 seconds or something yeah. like that. So nothing big, but something interesting to do. And then they start putting twists on it. Okay. That keep you engaged. How is that? This could be a series of mobs spawning that have numbers over their head. So if you kill them in the right order, you'll get yet more rewards. Or it'll be a treasure goblin that okay. will appear. And you have to kill that before it escapes. And it's in the, the mix of all the it AOE that you're doing. Yeah. This can happen during boss fights as well. So you're dealing with boss mechanics and suddenly there's an extra enemy. And you have to ignore the boss. Because if you kill the boss first, the enemy escapes. If you kill the boss first, the enemies don't count. So now you're fully engaged. Like, oh, we've got to do this. And it changes okay. up the gameplay. In what is just a basic, simple battle arena. So they're basically like affixes in uh, in Diablo, effectively, right? I mean, it's just like different affixes that the mobs have. No, kind of, like not really. I well, he's just he's he's listing out things that could just be affixes in an ARPG, kind of. Okay. Bunch of enemies in it, and yes, then it mixes no. it up. Okay. So you're engaged. Okay. Then you clear those enemies. You get the big reward out of the chest, and then a couple of things can happen. They put more twists on it. One of the things that can happen is you all get to play a game of higher or lower. You're presented with two playing cards. It can go between one and nine. Okay. And you'll be sold. Okay, your first card is two. Higher. Got it. Next card is seven. Lower. Next card is three. Higher. Next card is eight. <laughs> and then you can get five and you're like, oh God. Yeah, what does this do? Higher. Essentially it's doubles higher. the rewards from the treasure chest every single time. Up to five times. Oh, so wow. these rewards... To massively outstrip what you should ordinarily get. And you're so if you're playing, it's Gamba. I mean, the thing is, like, Gambas are exciting. That like every here's one thing. Like people always try to, like they try to identify this. Like it's like a fucking you know 200 IQ thing. Of course it's fucking Gamba. People love Gamba. Absolutely, that's the thing. Like uh, all of the the random drops, etc. They get that's why people do it.
Yeah, obviously. Fun, because you're then engaged with your players. Like, should we go higher or lower? I don't know. But you also have the chance to drop out. So if you get a five and you're like, uh, it could be higher or lower, we're right smack in the middle. Yeah. It's a real 50-50 guess. Maybe we just take our rewards and call it good. Maybe we risk it all to get a bunch of extra rewards. Maybe we don't. And then you, you have this really fun, engaging experience where your brain is engaged. You're not looking away at the screen. You're now focused on a very simple game that actually really benefits you. Because not only are you being rewarded with profession rewards, which is what you would want, so your rare, rare linens, your rare logs, whatever it might be, you are now being offered the chance of just playing a game. And this is what I adored about this. You're just playing a game with your friends. Uh, I think making it a group content is actually a good idea too. Because like I compare like group farming content like in this versus like uh, a New World, like chest runs or something like that. Chest runs are so annoying. Oh my god. I actually like chess runs in some ways. I think they're enjoyable and relaxing. But at the same time, they could be a whole lot fucking better. You're having fun. That's good and you're yeah, making decisions. Good. You're thinking about it. You're trying to risk it and do all these kind of things. It's right. just a game of higher or lower. It's nothing complicated. But if you do it right, you get showered in rewards. And these rewards include not just profession mats, but tons and tons of gill, which is the money in the game. But also, as always, similar to what I said in Bosnia, you're passively acquiring the uh, currency... Okay. To furnish all your alts or even your main characters if you want to in raid level gear. Oh, so, so it gives you tombstones? Is that it? Like, yeah, just so I understand. So do you get tombstones? Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, that is really, really fucking cool then. The good ones too. Wow. Yeah, I was going to say, like, okay, so this is incentivized pretty well then. Just you passively do gearing this. up other characters at the same time. That's just a something you don't even think about. And then I ultimately, I played for one afternoon... I ended up capping them, so I got like a, an almost full set of gear for my alt character uh -huh. that I've not leveled up to that level yet. It's similar to what I did Popular in Bosnia, so I have all this okay. gear waiting for me. Then when that's done, you're then presented with more options. All right, what is it? Right or left. Simple, simple. And I love how simple okay. they keep it, because when you're with a bunch of gamers, yeah. simple works super well. Do we go right or do we go left? Let and then they put the more twists on that as well, in that you can choose right or left, you go to it, and the door has many different animations that can play out. Okay. It can just open for you, and then you proceed to the next area where you can continue on. Ultimately, there's a set of five, which results in a mega boss, and I'll get there to a second. Ooh, that, that, is that the bonus, bonus, close, bonus? Look like it's going to close you out and then let you through. Or it will fully close and then pop a red alert sign, so you're all getting kicked out of the instance. And then it can be rescued at the last second. So the scream will actually fade out before it comes back. So you're like, oh my God, we got kicked out. I can't believe it on door number one or whatever. <laughs> and you, you you get to go through. And the same can happen okay. at like the final door. And you're sat there and you're like, oh my God, if we get the final door. And this is rare to have happen. I think the Wait, six so they have it go down. Then they just kind of like, they, they blue ball you and try to fucking make you think it's not going to happen. And then it does at the last second. Is that basically what's going on here? Yes? Oh my god. Okay, okay. As I did this, we only got to the last boss one time. Not that we were consistently showered rewards up to that point. Okay, they bait you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very funny. Alright, let me see this. Oof. Ooh. Damn. That's too bad. No way! Okay. Okay. No way! Okay, yeah, Rygang yeah, yeah. does it! Rygang brings it home with five votes! Jesus Christ, this is like the last boss. Well, the cool thing is when you get to the last boss and you have that door open... Yeah is you then get a nice big boss. Not super difficult again. Not intended to be. This is for fun. It's just giving you rewards. Okay. Then you get the mega chest at the end, which has 100,000 gil in it. Not huge to long-term players. That's but a lot. a decent amount of change. That's a lot of then fucking Then you can get money. to Gamber again. And you can get up to half a million gil each if you play this out correctly. And wow. you have that huge, like, tension of risk-reward. And at no point have I mentioned throughout this, did I get my profession drop. That just happens naturally okay. as you're playing. It just naturally happens in the background of you enjoying the game. This is farming in a new way. Because for a long time, the game uh, game devs, as I've seen through the ridiculous MMOs I've been playing, I've been playing Destiny this week, we've been playing EVE Online, all these kind of things. I've been trying to reinvent the wheel of how do we change farming for the modern audience. Because 
Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because like a lot of people are just tired of doing like the old school grinds. And I think this is just kind of like what happens is that a lot of people just get tired of having the same content over and over and over. People want new stuff. What a fucking surprise. Two decades ago, grinding out enemies was yeah. pretty normal. I did it. Most of you have done it. Most of you probably still do it today. But a more modern audience with so many gaming options available to them will we'll be turning their nose up at the idea of mm -hmm. like, I just have to farm. And you look at games like New World, where as soon as I started clicking those uh, st uh, stones and yep. trees and just watching a cast bar fill up, I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. And I kind really? of feel like- Oh, I actually didn't mind the New World. I didn't mind the New World professions at all. I thought they were fun, immersive, and good. Yeah, I, I enjoyed them. I did a lot of them. I need to dedicate an afternoon to just clicking trees and sticking yes. a movie on. Is how yes. I felt about it. It's like, okay, if Correct. I need to level this up, I'm just going to have to sit here and click trees and watch YouTube, watch Twitch, watch whatever mm -hmm. uh, in order to get through this. But I need to do it because I want to level this up, which is what a lot of the devs are hoping you'll do. They're like, yeah, you're still playing though, right? Yeah, yeah. Still playing. So just click those trees and keep getting it done. And it was one of the things that immediately turned me away. I was like, ah, I don't do this anymore because I can go and play something else where I could just be, I can have gameplay. Uh, I think this is one big thing. This is a big factor that a lot of people are running into now is that a lot of people out nowadays are just tired of uh, uh, they're, they're just tired of having content like just kind of like a delayed because people have less time in general nowadays. And I think it's also not that people have less time. It's that there's more competition in gaming now. So if you don't like the way a certain game is playing, well, who gives a fuck? Just go and play another game instead. And I think that's a lot of things that happen, right? Less patience. Yes, people have way less patience in gaming nowadays. And I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. I don't think it's something that like, oh, wow, like, you know, oh, gamers nowadays want everything handed to them. Well, it's like, yeah, I mean, to a certain extent, you're right. Like, people don't want to invest. They don't want to invest. Eight, they don't want to have to invest like eight hours a day in order to get certain rewards in the game. I think that's reasonable. You know, people have other things that they want to do at their time and they don't want to have content that like actively makes you waste your time. So, yeah, that's just what's happening more and more. Gaming it has more competition, especially with MMOs. MMOs have an older audience of people that have more of a dollar value associated with their time versus kids. So people just don't give a shit about that stuff as much. Uh, yeah, there it is. And the generation that grew up with this stuff is getting older and having less time. Yeah, I think that's a really big factor. Absolutely. And that's what I'm looking for in my games. That's why I wait love eight hours for a rare series and all yep. those. Is I, I love gameplay. I want to be playing the game. Clicking on a tree, <laughs> not really the gameplay I'm looking for, man. That's not the thing I'm looking for. Now, I said it wasn't perfect. Yeah. It's not perfect because, of course, you can be RNG'd out. And if you are looking for a specific drop, there's some randomness mm -hmm. to it, whether you get through the doors or not. But that is so alleviated by the fact that, one, I'm not doing anything boring and I'm having fun. I'm constantly looking at the screen, right? Look, think of the okay. things I mentioned. We're clicking the chest. There's mobs spawning. Yeah, that's okay, cool. I'm looking at that. My tension is starting to drift away. Then it's like, oh, we've got the ordered mobs to kill. Okay, so I'm back in the game again. Oh, we've got the, oh, the treasure goblins here. I need to do that. And the music changes to let you know that there's something else going on. Then we have to pick the door. Okay? It's more engaging gameplay, but like I do actually think that there is an audience of people, and they do exist. And like sometimes I'm like this too. Is that I want content that I can do on the game while I'm on a business call, like while I'm like on a Zoom call or I'm in a Discord call with somebody. I want content that I can do while I am just doing literally nothing else. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of people just enjoy, right? If it's Lost Ark, like I'm doing chaos dungeons over and over and over. If it's New World, I'm chopping down trees. Uh, if it's a WoW, I'm farming out like random ops. So I don't necessarily think this is like a fundamentally bad thing, but I think that like it should not be the pillar of the game. Like this should not be like a gameplay pillar of, you know, like mindless activities that you just have to do. I think that the more that they are, uh, like, they're, they're not mandatory, basically. They're optional, uh, is is the better. Right or left? And then the, the, the higher or lower spawn. It's like, okay, I'm invested here. All yeah. the time, I'm being drawn back into having fun and engaging. Mm -hmm. That's what I loved about this system. Yeah, it had nothing absolutely. to do with, like, oh, you're after, say, a certain rare piece of hide, a certain piece of leather, a certain piece of uh, iron ingots or something. Mm -hmm. So let's go and farm... 50 iron deposits to see whether that thing yeah, drops. Yeah, makes sense. This has nothing to do with that. And this is such a good idea for in letting people just have fun first, rewards later.
And this is how a lot of great businesses have started. I don't know if you know this, and this is a bit like out there, but <laughs> Spotify, for example, if you learn the history of Spotify, they were like, we don't care how we monetize this yet. What we're going to do is make it cool. We yeah, want to make this is a huge issue, right? Is that basically people build the cart before the horse. Uh, it, it's like you, you have like, is it the cart? Like what, what, what's like the fucking phrase? It's like you do the, the cart comes before the horse, something like that. Like, I don't remember what it was, but like basically you, you're thinking of monetization before you're thinking of gameplay. You're thinking of like, how can we make this a grind and retain players before you think of how to make it fun? Uh, chicken before they, the cart before the horse. Yeah, I, I thought that's what it was, right? Yeah, putting the cart before the horse. Yeah, sure. So you're, you're constantly focusing on things that are not about the fundamental enjoyment of the game. You're considering the game as like a retention mechanism to keep people involved. And like if you make the game built completely around like user psychology, eventually people break out of that and then they, re and then they resent that they were ever in it. Awesome. We, let's make this system cool. We'll find out how we make money on it later on. Yeah. Because the reverse happens in a lot of online gaming systems, which is like, right, how do we make money off this? Well, we keep people engaged. So that pr promotes microtransactions. <laughs> it makes our monthly active users look better. And again, this isn't just oh, a yeah. wow thing. This is like ev nearly every game. And yeah. FF14 still has this. I've just dipped my foot into professions overall. And I just started doing botany, which is like, okay, you go and click trees. They've made it a bit better by providing you spells and combos. And I haven't finished it out yet. So I want to see where it goes. Ultimately, you're riding around, and you're clicking on trees, cool, and you're on bushes, and Sounds you're collecting rewards from them. Now you do get to yeah. choose your rewards, which is mwah, uh, but it's still there in some way. But looking at this treasure map system is so good. The other flaw is if people don't engage with it, they don't know it's there. If you're not making it happen, a lot of people don't know it's there. And I saw that from my audience. I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. Well, this happens this even in WoW too, where like I'll interface with a system that people have like never even heard of before. They don't even know this is in the game. And then, like, I'm doing it, and people are like, wow, this is actually really cool. I wonder why, like, nobody does this. So, like, uh, like two good examples of this are, like, the, like, you know, like, the Warlords of Draenor or Colosseum that you had? And, like, everybody would just, like, get, uh, like, you'd get pushed up on that elevator, and then you'd be able to, like, situate yourself somewhere on the map, and, like, the last person alive, you know, got a prize. Like, this was really, really badass, and I did this, and people were like, wow, I didn't even know this was a thing anymore, right? The, yeah, the Colosseum. Exactly, the from the the Chromi scenario. Exactly, there's another one, and another one besides that is like you know, like that little gambling box area in patch 7.1 on the Broken Shore, where like you go inside the little, uh, it's like a, a, a I don't know, a bucket or something, and you go underneath. There's a bunch of different treasure chests, and like you click on those. Most people don't even know what those things are, and like that's the kind of good content that I think the game needs, and, and it's things that you don't necessarily need to know what it is because I think a lot of times, again, they they feel like they have to incentivize playing the game all the time. They have to incentivize this somehow. And it's like, this is incentivized too, but sometimes it gets incentivized so much that people end up resenting it, like Torghast. I think that's really the best example of the opposite. Or, or so Islands. <laughs> this is actually pretty awesome. From and the treasure then There's you have one. the yeah. problem of people looking for specific drops will get annoyed with the randomness a little bit. Even though they're getting yeah. showered with the rewards, they may not want those. They may be like, okay, I get a ton of gold. I get a load of tombstones or whatever to get all this gear. But what I'm really after is that one thing. And there are other ways of getting those things. But here's a side activity that you could do with your friends that is super fun. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it gets better. It yeah, does. absolutely. <laughs> this place system has been in place since Heaven's Ward, which is their second expansion. And I've all of them have of different these. ones. Different battle fuck? arenas, different styles of playing. So there's roulette. They've really gone with the gambling style. And I think that's really cool, especially when you have some influence or even wow. if you feel like you have some influence over it. That's like you cool. do with left or right. Is you make that choice. The roulette one is automated, but it's still fun to see where the thing's going to land. So whether you spawn a giant raid boss, a weak boss, get kicked out, get rescued. I had a ridiculous situation. That I've, the most bizarre RNG I've ever had in any video game is in the roulette one. We failed three times in a row and got rescued. Okay. And I've never seen anything like that. Is you, we got pulled out by a primal god who rescued us to allow us to play on and gave us a huge boss in return. So although we failed, we actually got this. Now, yeah, of course, like in the that. background, it's like, well, you didn't really fail. The, the custom is designed to show you. Well, like the randomness like that, I think actually makes it more interesting because like you never really know what's going to happen because a lot of times like people get into kind of, uh, it's like things are so formulaic that they're boring. It's like you're just doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. Uh, I think that's definitely true.
one, but you still get that response. Like, oh my God, we got kicked out on the second go. Yeah. Rescued? We're back in the game. Oh God, we failed again. Rescued? We're back in. What is going on? And having that visceral yeah, it emotional sounds like reaction gambling. to farming. It and let's remember that what we're doing here. We're farming profession mats. I've never had that in my life. I've never had that in my life. Come on, one more. We've lost the last two rounds. You can't make us lose three in a row. All right, you guys can see the uh, see the reaction. Oh, that's a good one, right? Oh, is that bad? Wow. How? So they really, they really fucking reel you in on this shit, huh? Holy shit! Okay, that Look actually is cool. Chaos, baby. A mega win? And yeah, it's exactly. It's such a good step in the right direction. It's such a step in the right direction. And another piece of the puzzle or why when you design cool. systems without thinking how do we just keep the player online all the time, it frees you up to just get wild and get wacky with it. And I really hope this is something that other game devs take into account because I want to do them a lot more. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Whereas when I'm farming, I'm just like, at least for me, and you guys probably feel the same in most cases. It's just like, oh, my God. I've got to go, I can't play right now. I've got to go well, farm. Well, I Elemental. think a really good example of like to tell if this system is good or not, if a farming system is good or not, is that do you ever do it after you get the rewards that you were wanting to get out of it? So like, for example, right now, like if, if I finish a reward system, I'm not going to go back and try to do it anymore. Why the fuck would I want to? I've already done everything that I want to do. There's no reason to keep going any farther than that. That's it. And so if you are continuing to interface with the system, even beyond getting the rewards out of it, then it's actually probably a good system. And if you stop the second that you stop getting the big rewards that are basically mandatory out of it, then it's obviously a bad system. That's the way I'd say it. I've had that conversation. I've got to go and do fishing. I've got to go. I need, I need potions. I need flasks. I need food. I have to go and farm chimeras or whatever it might be. Okay. I, so I can't PvP with you right now. I can't do some dungeons with you right now. I have to go and stand and do fishing. And I need... It's not a case if I even want to do it. I need to do it in order to do the gameplay later. Yeah, that's And that's sucks. where the big difference came from me. So I really wanted to talk about the system. Is how impressed I am and how... How much... I feel this is in such a step in the right direction is to one, okay, it's profession related. Does the system involved in farming it need to be profession related? No. Okay. Do we need people to feel like they have to do this? No. Um, so what should we do with it? Let's just have weird and wacky fun with it and create something that a group of eight people can be like, oh, hey, do you want to go and do this? Whereas even how many activities do you like, do you actually do large scale with your friends in MMOs or anything right now? Not many. It's usually... I think that's a big issue, is that, like, there's not a lot of things that you want to do with, like, large-scale groups that, like, are basically not mandatory. I, I do think that, like, for example, like, New World, how you have, like, the chest runs and stuff like that, it is good to get people together to, like, go around and do stuff, but the problem, though, is that it's so easy, and it's not actually... Uh, it's not actually planned out or anything. You know what I mean? Like, you're just sitting there and just doing it. That's it. Yeah, it's optimized gambling experience. Well, there's a lot of people. Here's the thing. There's a lot of people that they basically have to be motivated by some sort of reward or something like that in order for them to, like, really enjoy and actually go out of their way to do this kind of stuff. And I think that's something that people forget is that a lot of people are motivated by rewards and that's it. Sometimes I still enjoy monotonous profession grinds. Well, yeah, I do too, right? I think it's a problem is that like the more, so like basically the closer that the requirement for something like this is to the core gameplay loop, the worse it is. So for example, like really monotonous things like uh, Torghast or like farming elementals and WoW or something like that and like classic WoW, like this is very, very close to like the core gameplay loop and the core player power progression. 
And I think the farther away it is and the less mandatory it is, the more I think people won't mind the monotonous grinds because they don't feel like they have to do them. I think feeling like you have to do something in the game is one of the worst experiences ever. Trading M plus or dungeons or yeah. some do you want level together? This gave you another route. It's like, hey, do you want to go farm some a load of money and a load of alt gear and get some really expensive crafting materials that we can sell or we can use or whatever? Yeah. That sounds awesome. Well, having a fun system. Like, such yeah, a huge departure exactly. from what I'm used to that I adored it so much. So, there it is, dudes. <laughs> you guys have probably also noticed, I should point them out, uh, these displays behind me. These are our designs. Yeah? These are designed by Chris here in the office. That one actually looks pretty Germany. cool. Uh, this one... Who want the middle yeah, Chris one? Chris will probably put a better picture here. Yeah, I'm here. curious about the middle uh, one here. I don't know what this is. Armor Art 1. Um, best selling display on display. It's amazing. So go check those out as well. Yeah, I haven't been like there 29 yet. 29% discount code below. There you They're go. awesome. They're so good. I'll see you again, dudes. Bye-bye. This is a decent video. Yeah, I think so. Like, just in general, I, I agree with that overall. Because, like, whenever I'm looking at, like, these grinds... I kind of feel the same way is that like I felt this way with the new world crafting etc is that I thought the new world crafting was just so it was so draining and, and like literally because it would just drain all of your fucking resources like you would spend so much just leveling up your crafting it was insane man like holy fuck and that was what I really had a problem with. I really, really disliked that because I felt like I would grind all day just to push forward this arbitrary system that was designed this way. And it's, uh, yeah, getting the crafties in New World, the, the trophies is, like, really bad. Yeah, chat wants New World, uh, Elden Ring War. Uh, we're not going to watch that. We're going to watch the speed run after this. So, yeah, I mean, it's just so frustrating. Yeah, craft 17,000 gloves. Like, what the fuck? And that type of, that type of gameplay... I think that players were totally fine with that in MMOs 10 or maybe even 20 years ago, for sure. But nowadays, I think people have more things that demand their attention. They have better content that they can work towards and watch instead. And why the fuck would you want to sit around and farm out content like this whenever it's just so slow? And I think that's what the issue is more than anything. Yeah, it's very, very frustrating for me to see that.